Hello my soccer universe for a quick, hopefully, <laughs> review of what happened in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League yesterday evening where I followed some stuff, I saw a couple of highlights and so, so I'm a little bit more informed. My calculation spit out that the biggest winner of Feyenoord, however, that is also the craziest group ever. Uh, <laughs> the title says it. Four teams, eight points and two had to be eliminated. Uh, won completely, which was Austrian team Sturm Graz, and then of course Lazio also. Um, and the weirdest thing was that for Feyenoord, the way things were standing, they had only two options. Either they finish last or they finish first. What? How crazy is that? And they hang on, they win it, and act in the, actually they boost their chances of uh, going deeper in the tournament quite some. It was also a good night for uh, French teams. I think all French teams in the end made it through. Auger nice was the one that looked a little bit uh, on the edge. But hang on to Cologne. I lost two teams from the Conference League and I only gained last year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Austria Vienna it was already eliminated and current didn't make it, but you know, I the defensive frailties in the first half undid them and I think the overall the campaign did not warrant a little bit more. But there were some quite some exciting games in there and I think the most remarkable one for me is that Nantes actually down there made it through Union Berlin also after their horror horror start actually kind of cruised into the next Phase two. Let's get in. Um, the first thing is, of course, and probably that was our marquee match, but uh, where only the first place was kind of hinging on, which was United winning at Real Sociedad. However, they won by one goal too little. One more goal and they would have won the group. And so it's Real Sociedad who hang on. The goal came actually early uh, through Gamacho, um, um, assisted by Cristiano. Uh, I have not seen too much of the game, but I feel this is somewhere where, where United should, should have probably pushed for a second goal and then United could have uh, saved themselves a couple of fixtures, but it will make the draw very interesting. We'll talk more about the draw. But let's go straight into this absolutely crazy group F. Was it F? I said G before. I think it was F. Um, where ahead of the game we had Lazio and Sturm on five points each. Leading uh, eight points each, leading group and Feyenoord and Midtjylland having home games at five points each. Both of them needed a win, whereas Lazio and Sturm would be happy with, with a draw. However, a defeat of both of those would see the teams with, uh, getting eliminated because both Feyenoord and Midtjylland had the overall better goal difference. This is how it ended up that Feyenoord and Midtjylland were winning. But uh, there were quite some threats in there because... Midtjylland and Sturm, that was a, a rather, it, it was a much closer game than the scoreline suggests. It's just that Midtjylland were just uh, too fit physically and the referee let it be that physically. And so uh, that's something that Sturm uh, cannot really cope with very, 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 very well. But also Sturm failed to create really good chances. And if they had it, they finish, they missed the finishing touch that Dreyer had for Midtjylland, who gave them the lead. And at halftime, it was nil between Feyenoord and Lazio. With Lazio actually controlling most of the game, creating more chances, and Midtjylland 1 0 up. At this point, it is Midtjylland uh, first, Lazio, uh, no, yeah, Lazio first, Midtjylland second, uh, Sturm third, level on points with Midtjylland, but worse goal difference, and then Feyenoord uh, in last place. The second half continued much. Of the same uh, again a rather tight game but uh, Sturm just a little bit too green in a way um, whereas Lazio controlled the game without really uh, creating or converting their their chances and what's even worse for uh, Sturm and Lazio is that um, the goal that came that for uh, through Jimenez who had just came on he just bullies himself through and if you watch that goal it is just this Lazio defense completely unsorted. It's a weird goal because it was out of, of the game that the own defender takes out Providel and Jimenez can pull it in and score the 1-0 for Feyenoord who then actually shut up shop and played home rather safely. And at that point, it was Feyenoord first, Midtjylland second, Lazio third, Sturm fourth. 
And now um, Sturm pushing forward, concede another one, uh, again through Dreyer, again where they were completely unsorted, again where Mithulin were kind of physically. Um, and then they needed to hope that Lazio gets an equalist that is still co uh, continuing the conference league and Feyenoord is last. And the way it was standing uh, at that point, everyone had eight points. Mithulin had the win relatively safe, so it was Mithulin over Sturm for sure. So it was all down to Lazio scoring a goal. Winning the group in the same time and sending Feyenoord completely out of Europe. Of course that didn't happen because Feyenoord held on and was never really threatened anymore. What's worse, Lazio had even a player signed off in stoppage time. But it were dramatic scenes in torrentious rain that uh, reached us this morning as well. So yeah, uh, an absolute crazy group. It is on one side, if I look now from the Austrian perspective, it's on one side really, really tough for Sturm. You have eight points. Never has a team been eliminated with eight points in last place. Uh, so that on one side is really, really tough. However, if you score only four goals in six games and at one time lose 6-0, and it's exactly the results of match day two that proved the difference, where Feyenoord beat Sturm 6-0 and Midtjylland 5-1 over Lazio. This is something that could not be overcome. I mean, it's crazy, but this could not be overcome. This was the deciding factor, this match day. And so, yeah, uh, all teams were defensively, had around the same amount of goals conceded, but Sturm Graz that's uh, scored the least. And in that sense, probably it is deserved, but it's really, really hard. You could see how the players were shaken up after that one. Um, another interesting development was uh, then in Group uh, G, where not not only needed to win at Olympiakos, but also needed a uh, one one uh, 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 Karabakh to drop points because they would lose the head to head, and uh, Freiburg took a lead through a Peterson penalty. Had the game largely on on, on control. Karabakh having some really really rough tackles here. Or already one for the for the penalty should have been one, and then uh, when Medina in the 60 second got set 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 off. This was a yellow card initially. Well, with 10 men, um, Karabakh came actually back, scored only a very very late equalizer, so couldn't really turn it around. And at that point, not had taken the lead in the 79th minute through Mustafa Mohammed and then Blas in the 90th make it a 2-0 win. Very disappointing campaign for Olympiakos, but not kind of surprisingly moving on to, to, to the next round thanks to Karabakh uh, faltering uh, and Freiburg easily winning this group. Uh, another league uh, team, not at all the French team, had a really easy task with um, Monaco cruising past Javanas Vesda. Uh, that was a Javanas was a team that almost made it in the Champions League. They were completely obliterated by Kevin Follard in particular. Yes, they pulled one back, uh, made it 3-1, three, three, but that Monaco had always in control. And so uh, the goal by Baka Setos for Trapsons but to give the win over group winners Trapsons, uh, um, uh, Ferenc Varos, did not really count come from Ajesco as soon as Monaco had control of, of the game. Trap Trapson could have won this big didn't really do so. Um, then, of course, Arsenal and PSV both get their wins. Arsenal only 1 0 over Zurich, but and there were many Zurich, Zurich fans there. PSV 2 0, uh, cry kind of, kind of easy fan about in the fourth meeting between those two within this half year. Uh, win 2 0. Uh, I think Fenerbahce is through and started in uh, with a 1 1. Also, and then we had also a final where Roma needed to win against Ludo Goretz and going 1-0 down before the half, not undeserved. So the, the, the shot by Rick was a real rocket. Um, in the second half, Roma looking much better. I mean, Mourinho making it, Champagne, Cristante, Volpato, and especially Zaniolo. And he, was the, he made the difference because he got fouled for two penalties and... Yes, by the book, I think you can give both of these, but I thought that maybe, especially the first one looked a little bit odd. The second one was just stupid defending, on honestly. But the first one was a little bit the referee. Yeah, if he let that go, VAR will not turn that, that, that around. But Pellegrini converting both of these. But for me, um, what got a little bit more is that um, Ludogorets got an equalizer. And that was taken away because in the build, a player kind of hits the back with the hand in the face yes it was a weird but that was not enough for me to take that I really would have won the one to see it I mean 
Yes, Roma, 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 Roma. And I have as much uh, love for Ludogor, maybe a bit more love for Ludogor than I have for Red Bull Salzburg uh, within the Bulgarian game. However, I really would have liked, hey, for Bulgaria, it would have been great that they continue the Europa League. Uh, let's say that. But as a Roma fan, I would like, uh, uh, as a big Roma sympathizer, I would have, I've, I've loved Roma going through. Uh, don't, don't get wrong, but I would have loved to see to two whether they can get anything. Then, Zaniolo Dan really crowns his uh, performance with a brilliant goal to make it 3-1, revealing his kind of um, sports data uh, shirt and, 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 so, and my wife saying this is the first time she sees a man wearing a bra. Now she has seen it all. Well, I told her this is has been there for a while. And then also Union Berlin continued their remarkable comeback after losing the first two games and really seeming down, down and out with a very early 1-0 win against Union saint gilois which meant that Praga can, could do whatever they want. Union Berlin are going through. And that's exactly what we see now in the standings. We see that Arsenal, uh, Fenerbahce, uh, Betis and Union saint actually qualify for the next stage, whereas PSV secured the second spot. Stadren had it also fixed. Roma ahead of Ludogorets uh, don't fall into the Conference League, where they could have defended the title. And Union Berlin over Braga. There. And on the second page, we also that ahead of United. We said that 15 points. This is almost like Liverpool. Manchester United and Liverpool uh, really high points total and only second place. Now, uh, Lazio, as we said, have to continue the conference uh, league and Karma's a bitch. Because Iglitare just said, well, Roma, they have made this competition of for losers that our rivals are, sell, are cherishing so much. This is not a competition. Oh, well, you're playing now in that com 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 competition. Maybe Lazio will win it this time. That would actually be fun to make this the Roman competition in, in a way. Um, so we have Ressa, the Feyenoord, uh, Freiburg and Ferenc Varos uh, being already in the round of 16 uh, with Manchester United, Midtjylland, Nord and Monaco um, having to play against the Champions League team in the playoffs. Um, as for the favorites, and speaking of Champions League, we have one Champions League team now fully in Barcelona. Take a little bit scratch off from Arsenal's status as a favorite uh, because they're in there. Um, of course, Arsenal and Barcelona are the big two names, but I'm very surprised to see Freiburg and Betis uh, quite high up up there. I think it's because United have to go through that playoff as well. Another pro there are a few prominent names with Juve and Ajax in there as well. So I, I, I actually there, this Europa League looks really, really, really exciting, and then. You have also the Conference League winner in there with Roma, who is not that high up. Sevilla seems to be overrated in this competition so far, though. But I think it's really, really in, in, in interesting and a lot will hinge on the draw, which will happen on Monday. Speaking of the draw, here are the pots. We don't have many restrictions. Only PSV can play Ajax. Only in Berlin can play Bayer Leverkusen and Roma can play Juve. So uh, those are a little bit more likely for all the other opponents. I would have loved to see Ajax against PSV at some point but you know we'll we given that all three Dutch teams are still in the competition I think there's a good chance that we'll see each one um some tasty ties are possible I mean I'm looking at United against Ajax that would be a really interesting one or uh a Roma against Sevilla for instance a United uh, yes, it, Good ties. I think it will be very, very interesting. Moving over to the Conference League. Um, in the early, early games, I'd said, uh, in a, you know, secure the first place against Nipro. Uh, it was 1-1 uh, uh, before they have to thank the Dov pick, but in the end, Pavlidis give Z the win, which will be a draw, will, will be enough for them. The Gardens win that uh, the group, uh, we knew already, and Ghent uh, on the last match, they just completely turned on the second half. Uh, in a direct shootout where they needed to win and beat Molde and the Belgian teams also a pretty big um, uh, evening for them as well because also all of them in the end advanced. Um, so we have uh, Ghent going on there uh, where I think I saw Jens Peter Hauke playing which you know Milan, Frankfurt, Ghent it's not a career path that I'm particularly uh, fond of but you know maybe 
I really hope, I, I, I really think that guy is actually, actually very good. In Group G, uh, Slavia should have beaten Sivospor. Yes, they were 1-0 down at the half, uh, but they get an equalizer through an goal and they miss it. Uh, a wide open goal. Should have won that. That one, but it would not have, have been enough because Cluj won against Balkany. Although Balkany had quite a few chances to uh, take the point from Cluj, which was vital for Slavia because let's say Slavia win against Sivospor. Cluj win, then it would have been three way tied as Slavia unfortunately loses. Slavia uh, won casualty. They were in the quarterfinal and have been providing uh, good performances. And for me, it hurts a little bit more because um, just saying no more. Uh, Basel had also a 2 0 lead at Punic Yerevan. Uh, looking uh, good, but then Doye uh, gets a yellow red. Punic pulls from back and it was two goals away from uh, advancing. However, it was not to mean and Slovan uh, win easily at Jalgiris. Uh, Fiorentina very easy at R RFS, but uh, not enough for the group win because Bajakshi also had hearts uh, very much in the back. West Ham easy, 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 easy at Stauer. Uh, was really not much to play for there, but it was a straight shootout between Silkeborg and Anderlecht. Vera Feilov, who had just two seasons ago played for Ant Antwerp and already done, done Lusk a little bit. Uh, he gets an early lead. Um, Silkeborg tried their best, but you know, were a man down uh, early on as, as well in Anderlecht and in stoppage time. Secured a spot in the ne next round. And honestly, for a big name team like Anderlecht, who have not shown much as, as of late, I'm really happy uh, to see them back on the big stage. Um, Happel Bergeva beat Austria Vienna 4 0, but it was not enough because Villarreal, uh, under Kike Setien, don't do much of the defense. While they controlled the first half completely, it was like Poznan that scored and then they scored two more and secured their place in the next round. And um, yeah, big questions have to be asked from Villarreal. The last shootout direct was between Kern and Nice. Tremendous atmosphere. I think this was probably the best game of the evening. Um, with the game rather level, Köln coming out with loads of energy. Um, however, Nice higher holding on, and you know Lucien Favre, who had been a coach for rivals Gladbach. I mean, it was just perfect there. Um, and Nice actually strike uh, towards the end of the second half through Laborde and Brahimi, really a big hole in the heart of Cologne, right there. Uh, and it's exactly these defensive errors that uh, undid uh, Cologne in the entire group stage. The second half, though, uh, Cologne immediately came back. Husen Basic uh, gets the 1-2. Uh, and then just uh, at the hour mark, uh, Andre Duda makes it 2-2. And then they even immediately after scored the 3-2, but it was a clear offside. But at that point, then uh, the immense pressure, they could not keep, keep, keep it up. And, and, and this was exactly what I... I don't want to say feared, but I expect it, uh, that Kern will not be able to to keep gives up and then there will be a little bit breather. Um, yes, they tried to create something, but there was not really a big chance to make it 3-2. If they would have, after the 2-2, quickly made the 3-2, I think then it would have been snowballed in one, in one direction. But since uh, Nice could hold on to the draw that was necessary for, for them, um, it worked out in the end well. Partisan 1-1 won, won against Slovatsko. Uh, sees them go through as well. And so we have the final Europa League standings. Uh, we have Bajakshi here, West Ham, Villarreal and Nice from the first four groups going directly into the round. round we have Fiorentina, Anderlecht, Lech Poznan and Partizan have to play uh, teams from the Europa League coming down. And on the second part with AZ Dürr Gardens, that's a one surprise. As I think it's a little bit Sivospor uh, and also the Slovan over Basel. So those are kind of surprising results. Those go directly in the round of 16 where Dnipro, um, probably you would not have expected Dnipro to do that well, but on the other side, uh, give, given the group, yes, you would have. Uh, Ghent over Molde, Cluj and Basel, they all go in the playoff. Uh, and I think Slavia is the big disappointment of uh, for of the groups which over Köln and Slavia, I would say, are two teams that one would not have expected to get eliminated. Uh, as for the overall favorites, it's also now tight. We have Westman and Villarreal. Villarreal having been losing in the um, ratings quite a few. So Westman and Villarreal uh, is now ahead of Villarreal, but those two are the big favorites. And I'd said Lazio, Nice, Fiorentina, maybe Braga, 
I think that uh, sounds about right, although Bash actually had beaten Fiorentina. So, you know, uh, it's a wide open competition. What for me hurts a little bit, there are not too many teams in there that I have jerseys uh, from. With I know I need an Alz and I need an East uh, jersey and probably Braga as, as well. So maybe this is for the new year before uh, that I will make an effort there. Anderlecht would be cool as well because they're a classic team in a way. Speaking of the draw, uh, yes, the pots for the playoff draw i don't see now the big like in the europe but the big one in there but i think lazio is a team that any one of the playoff uh, teams uh, will want to avoid uh, and the one team that really would like to avoid them is fiorentina but they will not, not play but i think of those lazio and uh, lazio and probably uh, to some degree braga seem, seem to be the strongest teams left uh, among these 16 teams here and the only restriction is Fiorentina and Lazio of course. So yeah that was it for me from an eventful evening as I say I always enjoy these competitions. I am working on the moment I actually think it should be improved there should be a little bit promotion in there as well especially from Europa League I think the group winners should play the second place teams from the, champ from the Champions League in another playoff um to have kind of a little bit promotion from the europa league that would be interesting for sure any case please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye